From small villages in sub-Saharan Africa to the bustling cities of the Asian subcontinent, from Latin America to China and Eastern Europe, people everywhere are striving to improve their lives. People seeking the same things, opportunity to learn, an identity and ownership that allows them to prosper, a chance to earn a living for themselves and their families, to use their imaginations, to take risks and possibly fail, but to increase their options and to reap the rewards if they succeed. Join us now to see what can happen when ordinary people have the tools to help themselves. Major funding for this program has been provided by the Barney Family Foundation and the Green Children Foundation. Somewhere on Earth, at this very moment, a child is beginning its journey through life. 250 babies are born every minute, 15,000 an hour, 132 million a year, each and every year. And among them may be the potential to cure disease, to reinvent the future, or to change the course of world history. Because people are the world's ultimate resource. Here in this small fishing village in Ghana, a child is being celebrated. This welcoming ceremony, pojemo, or outdooring, is held only after the mother believes that her child will survive. Until today, her daughter has been considered a visiting spirit. Proud parents and friends are welcoming her into their world. Villagers are reminded that everyone must help raise and protect this child. This is the first time she has seen the outdoors. Family and friends introduce her to the sky, the earth, and the rain. This age-old ceremony is about family and community and a successful future. It's about the dreams of all parents for all children. Bortianor is a village of fishermen in the Ga region of Ghana. Their meager living depends on the sea and the weather. Joshua Corley has been fishing his entire life. His boat has been built by hand and his most prized possession, his outboard motor. He nets about $50 a week when the fishing is good. But schools of fish are not the only schools on Joshua's mind. His daughter, 12-year-old Victoria, has a dream to become a doctor. I know the school I hear me. Margaret Amamon is Victoria's mother. She collects the fish to smoke and sell later. Joshua's 
Joshua and Margaret are not alone in their hopes. The fathers are fishermen, and the mothers, what do they do? And not alone in their determination. James Tooley is a professor of education policy at the University of Newcastle upon Tyne in England. He studies schools in some of the poorest regions of the world, India, China, and Africa. The education minister of Ghana has invited James to study the situation here. Think of education as being preparation for adult life. And for these children, that means education can help lift them out of poverty, can bring them a better life than their parents have had. With help from the West, Ghana has built schools throughout the country and it has made sure that girls, as well as boys, attend. Public schools are free, but overcrowded. Children attend class only four hours a day. There are 73 students in this class. Joshua and Margaret want something better for Victoria. Studying schools in developing countries around the world, James Tooley has discovered something remarkable. So you walk to the canoe, You'd be really surprised some of the poorest people on this planet are getting a far better education than you'd imagine. And, and why, why do your parents send you to this private school? What we found in my study was that in poor areas like this, the majority of school children are in private school. And these schools outperform the government schools at a fraction of the teacher cost. In this small village, parents are willing to spend much of their meager assets on education. When I first came to Ghana, I, I met with just astonishment, because private schools, they say, are for the rich, for the elite, for the middle classes. So the question arises, why are parents paying fees to go to private schools when they could get government schools for free? I think it comes down to probably two main reasons. One is, when parents pay fees, they demand more of the schools. The second reason is that the schools themselves are accountable to the parents. Today, Victoria is going to school, a school of her parents' choosing. Assembly, please. Of the 780 schools in this region of Ghana, 75% are private, for-profit schools. James Tooley's research shows that all of the private schools here outperform the government schools, including Victoria's school, the Supreme Academy. Facilities here are spare, and teacher qualifications are not as strict as in the government school. Milk. <laughs> but classes are smaller, and the school day lasts a full seven hours. Headmaster Theophilus Quay began his career as a teacher. He founded the Supreme Academy in 2000. There were only 14 students and no desks. Where is Tanki? Where is Tanki? Today, the school has 367 students. He's here all day, every day. For Theophilus Quay, every child is important. In a 
small village like this, there are six private schools. Can you imagine that? A small village, six private schools. They're all in competition. They all want to innovate, to improve and raise standards. That's why competition is good. It's good for the parents, good for the children. It's good for the system. People say you've got to have public education. These are the poor people. Public education's got to work there. Some people might say you've got to have private education. But who cares? Let's cut through all that and say what works for the children? What works for the children of the poor? And then we can have a real discussion. Drop your ideological baggage. What I found in this research all over the world, in every single country, is that parents the world over are the same as parents back home. Parents want their children to do well in life. Parents want their children to get a good education. It's as natural as wanting your children to have a meal, to wear clothes. They want the best for their children. It's the same instinct. It's a universal phenomenon that no one can dispute. Benikenda ni machondoko.